prison adults were released on Friday, June 21, leaving some students and mostly parents happy and others not so much with their scores and placement. So we have Acting Chief Education Officer Terry Ann Thomas Gale with us, and she's going to discuss the results and the process for students requesting transfers between high schools. Morning. Good morning. Welcome, Good morning. Um, I said when we mentioned that you were coming today that I had to correct something because yesterday. I read somewhere that it, I think it's 86.7 or 87.6, but yesterday I said I read almost 90% got their first choice. Um, a gentleman who I know sent me a long missive and corrected me and said I didn't get the first choice because you have to choose seven schools. Yeah. I don't know if you have to, but you're allowed to, let me use that word, choose seven schools. So I want to go to George's or Casey. And then I put five other schools, right. which I don't really want to go to those five other schools. I want to go to George R. Casey. So if I get one of those five other schools, it's not my first choice, is it? I'm asking. No, um, no, it's not. It's the actual data is 86.7% of students would have gotten a preference. And that's one of the seven choices. So the word preference, preference. doesn't necessarily mean it's my first choice. Well, we in the ministry take it that all seven are schools that you would like to attend. Why seven, though? Why, why seven? Because we wanted to give students more opportunities to make a decision of to where they are placed. Initially, with GSAT, we had five student, um, five choices, and what we found out was that most students were not getting into a school that they would prefer to attend. And so we included a proximity, two schools that are proximity to your attending school. So in other words, if I don't get these five choices, my first five choices, I'm saying to you, there are some cluster choices that I am interested in attending, thus make it seven choices. Is it not misleading? If I got the seventh one or the sixth one to come out and say I got my choice? Uh, yes, you, it's not misleading. You got your choice. You selected seven and you got one of the seven. So it is your choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's talk about that. How, how are the children placed? What um, is the process? What, how do we prioritize of the seven now? That's how I, this is how I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in terms of schools. Okay, so after... The scripts are marked and they are scored. The entire population is ranked. So we use a merit system to place our students. So based on how you are ranked in the system, you're, we go down your list. So say, for example, myself, I would have chosen seven schools and I'm ranked third mm -hmm. in the entire population. So they would have placed the first ranked child place the second and now it's at my time. So they go to my first choice. More than likely the fact that I'm ranked third, mm -hmm. the schools there are still spaces in the high schools. And so I would get my first choice. So it all depends on how you're ranked compared to the entire population. And that placement score on the report, that's the placement score that speaks to your rank. Okay. Because some, I'm sorry, no, no. because a lot of what we're seeing is parents are saying, but my child got 88%. So how did they end up um, at that school? My child has a 90%. How, how did I, what you're saying, or what, what I'm getting from what you're saying is, your child may have got 90, but in the ranking, um, there are children who got 100 or 98. And it goes to like the 10th point. So for the merit system, we, while you're seeing, and we don't use percentage, we actually use a scale score. So while you may be seeing 356.2, in our system, it goes up to the tenth point. So you'll have, you'll have, there will be persons who outbeat you, outrank you by a point or a hundredth point. Okay, not to belabor the point, but do you have numbers for those who got their first choice? Yes, we do have that numbers. I don't have it with me right now. I could give you a, a crude um, estimate. I think about four thousand got like first. Um, we have... 4,000 out of how many? How many took? In 
how many? 35,000. 35, about 35,000. So 4,000 would have got their first, first choice. And then you go to second. Yeah. I could find the data and I could send it to you for you no, to no, actually just, use yeah, but, mm. on you. So we do have the data to show how our students are pay, placed and how they receive their rank. So we're going to get to the point now of the transfers. I know Neville's phone <laughs> goes off. Mine goes off and I'm not even connected to a school. Why? Do you think so many parents um, become preoccupied with getting their children transferred at the end of PEP? It all boils down to school of choice, um, the schools that are considered um, best fit or mm -hmm. the ideal situation for your student or your child. But if it is that you got one of your seven, the ministry is taking it for granted that you you would be comfortable place there, as well as it all boils down to your performance and the spaces that are available in these high schools. So our high schools tell us, I can take, for example, 100 boys and 110 girls. The computer cannot place 120 or 111 students into that school. Once 210 students are placed, the computer closes that school. Parents, are of the view that there are some schools that are better. And we do know that we do have issues and concerns with the image that some schools portray. And our, as parents, we want our students to be in the best situation. But I want to just ensure and just assure the population that the schools are who the parents really make it to be. Our parents can dictate and can help to grow our schools. And that's what we want. We want parents to help to um, grow the schools, be part of the high school system, just as though you are in your primary school and your prep school. We want our parents to take that same interest into high school because some of our schools that are deemed not fit, those schools don't see parents. And if it were that they had parents, they could be on par with other schools. And so we want to invite the parents just to work with our principals and our teachers and to make those schools schools of choice. Yeah. Mrs. Thomas Gale, if my son or daughter passes for school A and I want to get them to school B, school A doesn't have a problem with the person transferring and school B do have a problem with taking the person. I'll use this word deliberately, it's my word. Why would the ministry want to interfere with that? If both schools said, no problem, you the, can leave and I will take you, no problem. The ministry does not interfere. We want, we have a transfer process in order to um, map our children and to monitor where our students are. And so that the resources too can be allocated based on where you are. So we just, it's, it's not that we're interfering. We just want to know where you are so that the process can continue. Your data moves with you because in order to track our students, everything has to go. And so there is a process for transfer. Yep. And we just, we, we're looking now at what you need to do to get the transfer. Would there be a reason why the ministry would say you cannot move from one school no, to another? Is the there ministry any does reason not. that the ministry could, would say that? No, the ministry would not interfere. The relationship is between the parent and the receiving school and the school that is releasing the student. Okay. The I ministry just approves the process and um, yeah. give you permission to move on. I think part of why Neville is raising that is we, we, we read something that said the ministry is reminding um, parents and schools that the transfer should happen under adverse situations and that transfers are not just because right. I want to move to a school, I can move to a school. Can you clarify for me um, what are the circumstances within which a transfer um, is approved or seems possible? I think that statement referenced that the ministry would intervene to help in cases where it's adverse situation. That's when we intervene. So for example, you have not gotten in to the school. The ministry will assist you where necessary if it's an adverse situation. What does that mean? Um, what is, what is an there are things situation? varying situations. We have cases where parents would have selected wrong school. For example, you're in Kingston and you selected a school in Montego Bay. We're not going to allow you to go through the struggle of getting a place in a, King, a school in, Mon in Kingston. But we want to assure you that it's not just any school. We in the ministry still take into consideration your rank. 
your performance because we believe that the system, the programs designed in each of our high schools are so designed based on your abilities and to be able to move you along your education educational path and so it's not just getting into a school that you want we still take into consideration your performance okay. well explained thank you well explained thanks for coming thanks for having me it was my pleasure. pleasure acting chief education officer mrs terry ann thomas gale up next the importance of micro small and medium enterprises we'll soon come